Lift up your heads, you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. May our Lord Jesus Christ protect this cathedral from all evil and darkness, that it may be a beacon of His truth and love. Shalom be upon this house and on all who enter here, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
sacrifices that are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Church buildings from ancient times have represented the gate of heaven and the temple of God's presence. Imagine with me for a moment the gate of heaven and how you have entered in to his glory. His people as those living stones make this place both a home for hospitality and an outpost for mission. As his holy priesthood, we have entered this structure in procession, asking for God's presence to dwell within us as his temple of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for the glorious company of the apostles. And especially on this day for Saints Simon and Jude. And we pray, Lord, we do pray, that as they were faithful and zealous in their mission, so we may with ardent devotion make known the love and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to take an attitude of submission to the Holy Spirit that we may call upon Him. eternal God, mighty in power, of majesty incomprehensible, whom the heaven of heavens cannot contain, much less the walls of temples made with human hands. Yet who has been graciously pleased to promise your holy presence? Wherever two or three of your faithful servants assemble in your name, accept, O Lord, this service to you at our hands, and bless it with your glory, and to the salvation of your people through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please be seated. We praise you, almighty and eternal God, that for us and for our salvation you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be born among us, that through him we might become your sons and daughters. We praise you for his life on earth and for his death upon the cross, through which he offered himself as a perfect sacrifice. Bless be your name, Lord God. We praise you for raising him from the dead and for exalting him to be our great high priest. Bless be your name, Lord God. We praise you for sending your Holy Spirit to make us holy and to unite us in your holy church. Bless be your name, Lord God. Let us now pray in thanksgiving for this cathedral. 
Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of all your sheep, you now sit at the right hand of your Father in heaven. We give you thanks for your continued presence among us, especially in the apostolic ministry of your bishops. We thank you for this cathedral. We thank you for all the godly leaders who have sat and taught from this, from this chair. This cathedral represents an earthly reflection of your heavenly throne. May he who sits in this cathedral be a good shepherd and guardian of your sheep. And do him with your Holy Spirit. That he may earnestly teach your true and living word and be a wholesome example to his flock. Uniting us under you, the one true good shepherd who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. This is very personal to me. The saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of bishop, he desires a noble task. I invite you to please rise. Ever living Father, watchful and caring our source and our end. All that we are and all that we have is yours. Accept us now as we dedicate this place to which we come to praise your name, to ask your forgiveness, to know your healing power, to hear your word, and to be nourished by the body and blood of your Son. Be present always to guide and to judge, to illuminate and to bless your people. May what you do throughout our diocese be celebrated and in this place be lifted up to you in thanksgiving. Holy Spirit, safeguard and deepen our unity in you with the bond of peace throughout our diocese. Open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts that we may grow closer to you and to each other through joy and through suffering. Be with us in the fullness of your power as new members are added to your household. As we grow in grace through the years, when we are joined in marriage, when we turn to you in sickness or special need, when we are ordained and sent out, and at the last, when we are committed into the Father's hands. Now, O oh Father, Son and Holy Spirit, sanctify this place. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord. And you are exalted as head above all. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his
Let us be seated to hear the word of the Lord. Tonight is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, beginning at the first verse. Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak, and let the earth hear the words of my mouth. May my teaching drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew. Like gentle rain upon the tender grass, and like showers upon the herb. For I will proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God, the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. 
So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Father, quiet our hearts and minds that we may draw ever nearer to you. Lord Jesus, become to us palpable and real. Touch us with your holy touch. Speak that, that we may in the inner heart hear your voice. Give us great joy in the knowledge that you meet us in and through your word. So take captive our, our thoughts and our deeds and our emotions. We may allow you in this time to receive them as offerings. These things, O oh, Father, we praise through Jesus Christ, the living Word. Amen. Please be seated. How's that? <laughs> it, it just it felt to me like I, I was going to be doing this all evening, trying to see you. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Well, good evening, family. Good evening. We're here tonight um, for a, a very special time of dedication. We, we are doing something that cannot be done by human beings apart from God. And in fact, in my view of this, we're entering into a heavenly work. This night is a work that originates in the highest of the heavens. The reality of communion that is shared by the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The reality of the interplay of the Godhead and the abounding overflow of grace and mercy and love that comes to us from Him. This outpouring of God's grace upon His people and the grace that mobilizes and motivates us to actively engage in His kingdom reign upon the earth. It, it, it set me free exceedingly as a priest to acknowledge that Jesus as Lord was reigning. That, that, that my job was to stand in His presence, to receive His counsel, to walk in the way that He leads. I shouldn't have needed to be a priest to learn that. Amen. It, it is an invitation I extend to all of you tonight. For the life that you share in the Lord, that, that you might walk in the knowledge of His abounding, sanctifying grace that flows to you. You matter to Him in a way far beyond what you can imagine. And He delights in those who... Open their hearts to Him. But we're not here to do anything that God cannot do. He won't, doesn't even really need us. Neither are we able to add to His fullness. We can, though, share in this abounding grace and love that flows from Him to steady ourselves by His Word. This world seems to be shifting. Many of the things we thought would last forever are not as stable as they were. Can't count on things going and people doing in the way that they have done at times gone by. It's a shifting time. Time to learn new things. New opportunities to understand how Jesus is reigning. 
even when it appears to him that is not, that he is not. That we may walk in the power that he has given us through his Holy Spirit. The psalmist from tonight says this. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. The word, you see, is secure in the heavens. In the, in the presence, in the fullness of God, the word is firmly fixed. It doesn't shift. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. He hasn't quit. He hasn't resigned from his job as Lord. You have established the earth. This earth upon which we live is his. He established it. And it stands fast. Hallelujah. What a, what a, what a joy, you see, to sort of push the reset button in terms of what we know to be true in spite of what we might hear or even experience emotionally from day to day. The psalmist says, by your appointment, they stand this day, for all things are your servants. Now it's an, an incredible stretch for many of us because we look around us and say, wow, what's gone wrong? And so this psalmist comes in this evening hour to remind us all these things are his servants. The very best that we ourselves can offer is our servanthood. It's the best. It's the highest offering. Because servanthood is the nature of God. We only return to him what he has given and formed in us. And this was manifestly displayed in Jesus who serves his Father's will and no one else's by humbling himself on a cross. Those words sort of flow off the page like, oh yeah, we get that. Like, oh yeah. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How costly is this offering from the Father. How deep is the grief upon the heart of God for the gravity of sin. How amazing is it that when our lives are spattered with His blood that that marks us forever. Because he wants us and all who would come to the knowledge and the love and the faith in him to live forever with him. That he would acknowledge that which marks us, which is the blood of his son. In Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus, he acknowledges this, that apart from Jesus, they would be left forever outside of fellowship with God. Because they could never actually change in their own physicality or in their own history, their lineage. They would never become Jews. It's impossible. In the strictest expressions of Judaism, there is no provision for or acknowledgement of converts. But it was not the Father's will to show himself to one people so that they would use his goodness to show themselves special. To withhold, you see, the fullness of the offering that he gave them. It was his will that all might know him. All. Let me say it again. All. Everyone you know. Everyone you've met. Everyone who passes through your life. Everyone you you quietly cursed. Everyone that has offended or, or hindered you in some way. Because he wants them also to share in the life that is in him. This is what he longs for. This is what is upon his heart every waking moment. So Paul writes to the Gentiles, he says, but now, 
in Christ Jesus, in the Yeshua who is Messiah, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So what was impossible now is made possible through Jesus. For he himself is our shalom. And at the heart of that peace is not just feeling better, but united, unified, made one with him and he and us as we pray in the Eucharist every time we break bread. This has made us both one. And has broken down in the flesh the carnality of people in our own humanity, the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man, one new person in place of the two. So making peace. And might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross. Thereby killing the hostility. Destroying the hostility. This is the heavenly work into which Jesus invites us. And the reality is that if you and I operate in the hostility or resentment or bitterness or judgment that is appropriate to humanity, it's only appropriate to the humanity that does not know Jesus. What he is begging us to do is enter in and let the blood of Jesus renew us that he may do violence to the hostility. That he may destroy the part of us that would reject another. That he would, he would deal with the part of us that wants to be made higher at someone else's expense. So here's an experiment in koinonia. Look at the person sitting next to you. Turn your head and look. And hold your eyes there for a moment. Either side, turn, look at both sides. Turn and look. <laughs> the sermon's here somewhere. <laughs> turn and look. Really look. While you're looking, I'll find my place. <laughs> In Jesus, you are one, not two. So if, if I'm telling you the truth, and it's not just my truth, but it's the truth of God, then how are you going to relate? Because you're one and not two. What's going to change? What are you going to do to act upon the thing that you know to be true. Now here's a harder one. The residents nearby your house and your neighborhood or nearby in this house. In Jesus, you and they are one. For all the clergy, wherever your house of worship is, wherever your actual home is, in Jesus, you are one. So how important it is that we find a way to be in Jesus. And for those who are setting themselves apart or have been abandoned by the church or been offended by somebody that gives them an excuse, how important are they to you? Because you cannot be one without them. Oneness is not in our singularity, it's in our complementarity. It's in our engagement in the experiment of unity that comes by God's grace and the shedding of His blood. Those from whom, for whom the gospel is anathema, 
It's a big word, isn't it? They don't like it, is what that means. They're offended by it. They, they reject it. They, they, they have nothing to do with it. They think it's wrong, and they're, and, and they're going to find a way to tell you so or to be indifferent to you because you believe all that bad stuff. In Jesus, they and us are one. How important is it that we engage with those who have rejected? Not only him, but us. And this unity is the nature of God. This unity is meant to be manifest in God's people. This unity is at the center of community. Strangerhood is not appropriate to the community of God's people. Life in Him, intimacy with Him, reaching for one another, engaging in life, doing life together. This nature of God presses into a humanity that would rather be two. We'd rather be ten. We'd rather be a hundred or a thousand than we would rather be what? Apart from Jesus. For those who meet us in Jesus, because Jesus reigns over us and in us, Paul expresses the most beautiful of gifts. I'd like to share it with you. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens. You belong. But you are fellow citizens with the saints, the members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles on the foundation of the prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. His life, his presence, his work is what holds it all together. So in whom this, this one, the whole structure being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In this, he says, in this, in this Yeshua, in this Jesus, in this you are built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Now what does a cathedral represent then? If this be true, what's the point of a worship service and a memorandum of understanding and a, and, and a way of gathering and praying? The purpose of the Father through Jesus His Son to use those who have found their peace in Jesus to advance His kingdom. That's what this is about. To evermore reach for those who would remain separate. For those who would remain outside. God, gather them in. To call those who are unrepentant to love those through Jesus who are bereft of love. These things are the works. This cathedral is for the Missio Jesu, the mission of Jesus, to seek people. Really. When we say go in peace to love and serve the Lord, we really mean it. Because He does. How are you going to do that in your neighborhood? On your block watch, in your job site, wherever else you go. How are you going to do that? To seek people and seek them and seek them and seek them. <clears throat> that Jesus may save and redeem and reconcile them. Wouldn't it be an amazing testimony for people who you know as strangers would become friends of Jesus because of you? They're your legacy. They're the ones who will testify that you know him. Because you understand that together you are one in Jesus. This cathedral will lead us by God's grace and only by God's grace to go into these western states that border Mexico and Canada. Lock arms with other Anglicans and Pentecostals and Wesleyans and Baptists and all the different expressions of the body of Christ. But to go to go into these neighborhoods and communities and cities and bear witness to him. Now Jesus told his disciples the perils of his love. I'm not going to tell you this is easy. I've been planting churches all of my adult ministry. 
my lowest lows have come in this work. I've raised a family on incomes that would be understood as meager at best. God provided. He did. And my children came to faith. And my wife, who joins me here tonight, we're still in love. And God still has more to do with us and through us for His sake. So Jesus says this, if the world hates you, know this, it hated me before it hated you. I tell people, and this is not a throwaway line, what do we think when the one we follow got killed for doing his job? What do we think for ourselves? What do we expect? So the real issue is, do we love Him? And do we love those that He loves when they don't love Him? These are the ones who will be known by Him as His disciples. Those who love Him and go anyway. Those who love people who don't love Him and befriend them. He says, remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. In the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, I invite you to join me in serving Jesus every day. Every day. I invite you to become an everyday missionary. Those who are from Living Faith in Tempe, who've traveled all the way over, they've heard this for years. Because I can't get it out of my system. <laughs> Go to your neighborhood. Go to the people that you live nearby. Go and build relationships. Find people in ways that doing things you love to do. Live as Jesus' servant in your community and seek them who need him. Lead your congregation. I'm not speaking only to the clergy, but leaders. Lead your congregation members out into the harvest for love's sake. And bless people who would otherwise stand outside of the fellowship with Jesus that you and I share in. We do these things not simply because they are good things, even though they are. Or that we are good, because I know that we're not, but that God who lives in us is. We tear down the dividing walls of hostility. Because He has torn them down in us. Because His love has done this for us. We serve the world because Jesus satisfied our need for Him. And we go in the service of others. We've heard His call. Let us go that others may hear Him too. So you are my beloved. You are the family of Christ. You are my brothers and sisters. I stand among you as one who serves. I pray that it may remain always that way with me. That I may seek for nothing more than the privilege to serve. Stand with me. Stand with your pastors. Stand with your community in these days as one who serves. Because this is the way of Jesus. And His way is the way of life. I thought maybe that I would close with a prayer. I, I put a prayer together on a half sheet in your bulletin. Um, and what I'd like to do, I think, is give you an opportunity for those who can hear from Jesus tonight, who've heard somehow in this, this effort, in, in this uh, exposition, will of a text. It, if, if you would pray and if you would go, then rise with me and let's pray a prayer together. It's called Prayer for the Lord of the Harvest.
Blessed Lord, you have given us a wonderful lesson to learn. We humbly ask that you let us see the spiritual realities of our life. There is a large harvest which is perishing as it waits for your disciples to give the signal for laborers to come. Lord, universal, made visible wherever your people assemble. We thank you, Lord. For your presence wherever two or three have gathered together in your name. We thank you, Lord. For this cathedral home, 
where our common mission is renewed and refreshed. We thank you, Lord. For this sanctuary where we may be still and know that you are God. We thank you, Lord. For our adoption by grace and for our daily nourishment with the bread of life. We thank you, Lord. For the knowledge of your will and the grace to perform it. We thank you, Lord. For the fulfilling of our desires and petitions as you see best for us. We thank you, Lord. For the pardon of our sins, which restores us to the fellowship of your faithful people. We thank you, Lord. For the blessing of our vows and the crowning of our years with your goodness. We thank you, Lord. For the faith of those who have gone before us and for the encouragement of their perseverance. We thank you, Lord. For the fellowship of all your saints. We thank you, Lord. For you, the master builder, never abandon your church, which you have built of living stones. You send us those who restore its ancient walls and reunite its broken ramparts, that it may be a holy temple of your presence. The Lord has done great things for us. And we are glad. O oh God, for the gifts of your people, and for the work of many hands, which have beautified this place and furnished it for the celebration of your holy mysteries. Accept and bless all that we have done, and grant that in these earthly things we may behold the order and beauty of things heavenly, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For the clergy be seated and the laity stand. Paul wrote in his letter to the Ephesians, For by grace you have been saved by faith. And that is not your own doing, it is a gift from God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. God has given us a wonderful free gift. Are you ready to commit yourself to Him as a result of what He has done for you? By God's grace, I am. Will you celebrate with the body of Christ every Sunday and sing praises to His name? By God's grace, I am. Will you study God's word regularly and keep His word in your heart? By God's grace, I am. Will you live out your baptismal vows each and every day? By God's grace, I will. Will you remember the importance of baptism and confirmation for your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren and those who are new to our apostolic Christian faith? By God's grace, I will. Will you prayerfully consider the biblical tithe as the minimum standard of your giving? to support the building of his kingdom. By God's grace, I will. Will you practice forgiveness? Paul writes to the Colossians, As the Lord has forgiven you, you must also forgive. By God's grace, I will. Will you mentally and spiritually prepare to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion each Sunday? By God's grace, I will. Will you develop your spiritual discipline by observing the feasts and fasts of the church? By God's grace, I will. Will you learn more about your faith? This will enable you to become a more effective ambassador for Him. By God's grace, I will. Will you share the good news of Christ to all who do not know Him? By God's grace, I will. Gracious Father, send therefore your Holy Spirit on all who have offered their lives to you this night. Confirm in them every promise, every blessing. Strengthen them by your Holy Spirit that they may live and share and do all in accord with your Holy Word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please be seated. Invite the deacons to please rise.
can't see you. There you are. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Amen. Do you mind if I step out of this chair? And yeah. I want to see you. I love you, and I want to be able to connect with you when we're, when we're committing these things. It belongs to the office of the teacher to assist the priest in public worship, especially the administration of Holy Communion, to lead in public prayer, to read the gospel, to instruct both young and old in the catechism, <coughs> and at the direction of the priest to baptize and to preach. Furthermore, it's the deacon's office to work with the laity and searching for the sick, the poor, and the helpless, that they may be relieved. You, my friends, are missionaries, not just pastors. I call you to that this night. Will you do this gladly and willingly? I will do so. The Lord be my help. Do you trust that you are inwardly moved by the Holy Spirit to take upon yourself this office and ministry to serve God for the promoting of His glory and the edifying of His people? I so trust. Amen. Do you believe that you are truly called according to the will of our Lord Jesus Christ? and in accord with the canons of this church to the ministry of the same. I so believe. And are you persuaded that the Holy Scriptures contain all doctrine required as necessary for salvation eternally through faith in Jesus Christ? I am so persuaded. Will you then diligently read the same to the people assembled in the church building where you are appointed to serve? I will. Will you be diligent to frame and fashion your own lives and the lives of your families? according to the doctrine of Christ, and to make both yourselves and them as much as in you lies wholesome examples to the flock of Christ. And I will do so, the Lord be my heart. Will you reverently obey your bishop and other ministers, who according to the canons of the church may have charge and authority over you, following with a glad mind and the good will of their godly admonitions? I will do so, the Lord be my heart. Holy Spirit, come now and bless these deacons. If they have recommitted their life to you, make them faithful servants and effective evangelists and missionaries. For your sake, that your kingdom may come. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Would the deacons please be seated? Would the presbyters please rise? Presbyters, please rise. Or presbyters. You've heard how weighty is this office to which you are called. I now exhort you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to be a messenger, a watchman, a steward of the Lord. You are to teach, yea, to warn, yea, to feed and to provide for the Lord's family and to seek for Christ's sheep who are in the midst of this fallen world, that they may be saved through Christ forever. Remember how great is this treasure committed to your charge. They are the sheep of Christ for whom he shed his blood. The church you serve is his bride, his body. If the church or any of her members is hurt or hindered by your negligence, you must know both the gravity of your fault and the grievous judgment that will result. Therefore, consider the purpose of your ministry to the children of God. Work diligently. With your whole heart, your whole heart, to bring those in your care into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of God and to maturity in Christ, that there may be among you neither error in religion nor immorality in life. Finally, equip and lead your congregation to proclaim tirelessly the gospel of Jesus Christ. Underline this, please. Bold it. Read it every day. Seeing then that the demands of this holy office are so great, lay aside all worldly distractions and take care to direct all that you do to this purpose. Read and mark and learn and inwardly digest the scriptures that you may show yourself both dutiful and thankful to the Lord and frame your conduct, that of your household, and those committed to your care according to the doctrine and discipline of Christ. Know, however, that you cannot accomplish this of yourself. He must do it. Let him. Beg him. 
For the will and the ability needed are given by God alone. Therefore, pray earnestly for His Holy Spirit, both to enlighten your mind and to strengthen your resolve. Do you believe in your heart, my brothers and sisters, that you are truly called according to the will of our Lord Jesus Christ and according to the canons of this church to the order and ministry of the priesthood? I, I so believe. Amen. Do you believe that the Holy Scriptures contain all doctrine required as necessary for eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? And are you determined out of the scriptures to instruct the people committed to your charge and to teach nothing as necessary to salvation, but that which may be concluded and proved by the scriptures? I believe it, and so determined by God's grace. Will you then give your faithful diligence always so to minister the doctrine, the sacraments, and the discipline of Christ as the Lord has commanded, and as this church has received them according to the commandments of God? so that you may teach the people committed to your charge with all diligence to keep and observe them. I will, by the help of the Lord. Will you be ready with all faithful diligence to banish and drive away from the body of Christ all erroneous and strange doctrines contrary to God's word, to use both public and private admonitions and exhortations to the weak as well as the strong within your charge, as need shall require and occasion shall be given? I will. Will you be diligent in prayer? The reading of Holy Scripture. And such study as may further the knowledge of the same, laying aside the study of the world and the flesh. I will, the Lord, be my helper. Will you be diligent to frame and fashion your own life and that of your family according to the doctrine of Christ, and to make both yourself and them as much as you are able, wholesome examples and patterns to the flock of Christ? I will, the Lord, be my helper. Will you maintain then and set forward as much as you are able quietness and peace and love among all Christian people, and especially among those who are or shall be committed to your charge? I will, the Lord, be my helper. Will you then reverently obey your bishop and other chief ministers who, according to the canons of the church, may have charge and authority over you? following with a glad mind and will their godly admonitions, and submitting yourself to their godly judgments. I will, I will the Lord, be my helper. I'd like to invite Bishop Todd to pray over our presbyters now. my turn find the deans to come forward. Um, my brother Bishop, come and stand with them. We're in mutual ministry, so you can exhort me and call me to obedience. It belongs to the office of the bishop to believe the people of God by upholding the authority of the Holy Scriptures, ministering to the clergy, doing the work of the supporting and overseeing the planting of churches. Have you reviewed the vows you took by God's grace and your ordination? And do you now reaffirm your commitment to serve as a bishop in Christ's church? I will do so, the Lord being my help. beloved, we have assembled here for the purpose of instituting the Reverend Dr. Scott Peterson as the first dean of this cathedral. The cathedral has been dedicated to serve the diocese as a home of hospitality, as a house of prayer, and as a greenhouse of disciple-making. We hijack that name from our brothers in Chicago. <laughs> it's also an embassy of gospel mission. The responsibilities of the cathedral dean, therefore, reflect the cathedral's purposes. 
Dean must lead this local congregation of all saints in the cathedral's mission to welcome all, to worship God, to train together, to share the gospel in the way of Jesus in Long Beach and all the surrounding areas. There are 18 million people in this region. The dean must further practice hospitality to the leaders and the congregations of our diocese, encouraging them through prayer, care, and edifying them through training and service, and so supporting the bishop and maintaining the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace in our diocese. The dean must also collaborate with the bishop and the bishop with you, my brother, all diocesan leadership together in developing and maintaining relationships with our Anglican, provincial, and global partners, and with other church bodies, regionally and globally, who labor with us in gospel mission. In view of these things, with joyful hope, we read before you this letter by which Father Scott is instituted as Cathedral Dean supposed to have a letter that's right here. No, it's not. It's grabbing one down. Dear Scott, my brother, it's our honor and privilege today in the ninth year of the Diocese of Western Anglicans, and we, the Right Reverend M. Keith Andrews, institute you, install you. The very Reverend Dr. Scott Peterson as the first dean of All Saints Anglican Cathedral in Long Beach, California. You have been called to work together with your bishop and fellow presbyters and deacons of this diocese as the dean of our cathedral, serving as pastor, priest, and teacher to take your place in the councils of the church. Now, in accordance with the Cathedral Memorandum of Understanding, we work so hard on our hearts are in it. You have been selected to serve the people of All Saints Anglican Cathedral and the Diocese in the fear and service of God, for the welfare of God's beloved entrusted to your care. Having committed yourself to this work, do not forget the trust of those who have chosen you. Uh, your people love you so much. Care alike for the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Love and serve his people. Nourish and strengthen them to glorify God in this life and in the life to come. This letter is a sign that you are fully empowered and authorized to exercise this ministry, accepting its privileges, of which you may from time to time think there are very few, <laughs> and its responsibilities, and from time to time they will seem very great. You are a priest and dean of this diocese. In communion with your bishop, may the Lord who has given you the will to do these things give you the grace and the power to perform them. This is given under my hand and seal in the city of Long Beach on the 27th of October, 2017, and in the third year of my consecration. I know you know what they say, and having signed them, are you prepared to apply your life and submit to those oaths which you've now signed? I'd like to invite Dawn to come forward. And if Carol wants to, she can too. We'd love to have it there. I'd like to invite the deans to come 
and Bishop Todd come. We'll lay hands on these weapons and turn around our face to the assembly. Beans come and pray. Beloved, stretch forth your hands that the Spirit of God may move upon them today and they may receive your mercy. This is a family work. It's too heavy for one person to carry without the help of those who love him. Heavenly Father, we bless you. We call upon you now, Holy Spirit, to come and descend upon my brother and his wife and his daughter. Angels of God, protect them. Fill them with life-giving power. And may the righteousness and peace and joy of God's kingdom mark your ways. Fill your heart and make the words of your mouth works of your hand, ever more edifying, and ever more free. And Brother Deans, if, if the Lord has given you something to pray, right now. Yeah. So Father, I pray that you will empower uh, your servant Scott. May this house of word continue to be a house of prayer for all people. May our brother Scott be a man of prayer for this congregation and this community. And may his family be blessed and resourced by a vital and real prayer life. Keep in continual connection with you, the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. I pray for Dom and for Karen. It is, it is tough sometimes to carry the weight of responsibility of ministry in a community of faith. It is challenging in a community that may take great glee in rejecting you. So impress your love upon their hearts now. We love them. Help them to know that. You bless them. Help them to know them. You protect them. Help them. Or fill them with joy. Come, Spirit of God, and fill them with joy. Joy well up. Joy overflowing. A joy of Lord Jesus, we commit ourselves to you now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want you guys to remain up here if you wouldn't mind. We've got some gifts uh, for me, but uh, we want you to know that I, I get this is hard. And I know that there's pressure. Here. We've actually, why don't you guys stand here and face, and I'll come over here. Now, we've got something, a gift for you, and I um, want to be able to give you something, and we'll explain it. Uh, this is the gift. Now, we're calling it a pilgrim staff, um, and there's a Russian Orthodox cross on the front of it, um, as a reminder. Um, so here's the word. In the name and on the behalf of the Diocese of Western Anglicans, 
I do acknowledge and receive you, the very Reverend Dr. Scott Peterson, the Dean of All Saints Anglican Cathedral. And in token of the leadership of the missions of this cathedral, I entrust to you, I give into your hands this pilgrim staff, that you may always remember and welcome and receive and care for those disciples on the gospel way, whether coming for refreshment or whether they are being sent on mission. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. And uh, President Diocese is going to come join me. We're giving you something amazingly wonderful. The Constitution, the canons, and the bylaws. <laughs> Receive these governing documents of the Anglican Church in North America and our diocese. That as you lead in the life of this cathedral, you may remain mindful of the common life and mission we share with all the Anglican dioceses and all the bishops and all the congregations and our brother bishop is here to represent all around North America. Never be lacking in zeal. Be spiritual fervor. We say that in relationship to the canons and the constitution of the province and the diocese. Beloved. Receive the gift, use it to serve one another. As it is stewards of God's very grace. We have something else that's really fun. and go ahead and set those down if you'd like to. Feel free to be more comfortable. <coughs> oh Lord my God, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Yet you have called your servant to stand in your house and to serve at your altar. To you and to your service I devote myself, body, soul, and spirit. Fill my memory with the record of your mighty works. Enlighten my understanding with the light of your Holy Spirit. And may all the desires of my heart and will center in what you have for me, that me do. Make me an instrument of your salvation for the people entrusted to my care. 
and an instrument of your peace and concord among the churches of our diocese. Grant that I may faithfully administer your holy sacraments and by my life and teaching set forth your true and living word. Be always with me in carrying out the duties of this ministry. In prayer, quicken my devotion. In praises, heighten my love and gratitude. In preaching, give me readiness of thought and expression. In training, alert me to the needs of those who learn. In hosting, atone me to the hearts of those who gather. In sharing the gospel, embolden my words and works. In ministry partnerships, help me preserve the unity of your spirit and the bond of your true peace. By your empowering grace, enable me faithfully to lead as All Saints Anglican Cathedral invites all to grow together in the way of Jesus, developing faithful disciples and establishing missional communities throughout Long Beach and the four deaneries in, our, in the diocese. All this I ask for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The assembly will stand. Almighty God, you have called us to the fellowship of your Son, Jesus, the chosen and precious living cornerstone, into whom all your faithful people are being built into a spiritual house. Grant that by the empowering grace of your indwelling Holy Spirit, this cathedral family may be so united in purpose with the churches of this diocese that together they may grow as a holy priesthood, offering up spiritual sacrifices acceptable through Jesus, together declaring your praises, and together rejoicing in your mercy and favor. Pour out the abundance of your grace that all who gather in this cathedral home may with one heart desire the increase of your holy apostolic church. And with one voice profess the faith once delivered to the saints. Defend them from the sins of heresy and schism. Supply them with the things that make for peace and the building up of one another in love. Grant that they may honor others above themselves, being filled with godly zeal and spiritual fervor, serving the Lord Jesus. May they be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, sharing gladly with the Lord's people who are in need and practicing hospitality. May they live in harmony with one another and with the churches of our diocese, rejoicing with those who rejoice, mourning with those who mourn, blessing their enemies in humility of heart, overcoming evil with good, and boldly interceding before the throne of grace, that the abiding fruitfulness of obedient discipleship may be manifest in their lives. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, the gracious Bishop and Shepherd of our souls, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent 
and with true faith turn to him. Have mercy upon you. Have mercy upon you. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let us rise before the Lord. The peace of the Lord be all with you. Let us greet one another.
I, I love this offer choice sentence, so I just want to encourage you to uh, enjoy it with me tonight. You are a choice and a chosen place, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of God's own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That this night, um, the, the choir is going to sing beautifully. Um, it, I would invite you to make offerings. And, and, and when I talked to Father Scott about this, I, I said, what would happen if we made offerings that could go toward just the upkeep and the maintenance of a building that, that really received a certain amount of neglect in the, in the uh, 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 difficulties of previous days? Um, <laughs> But this is our home now, too, and, and if there's uh, a, 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 a way for you to make an offering, I would pray that you would do so. Listen to the Lord for this. Um, if there's a way that, that um, you could offer a generous offering, I promise you that we'll go to prepare a house um, that the nations may be reached. So, uh, beloved, um, receive this invitation from you this night. In Jesus' name.
thanks to the Lord our God. It is just and right so to do. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always, and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of our flock, who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations, and promise to be with them always, even to the end of the ages. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Now sanctify these gifts, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also. Come Holy Spirit, that we may be filled with you and manifest your presence and your power in the world. Therefore, Heavenly Father, as we joyfully proclaim our Lord's death and life and his resurrection, we offer ourselves, our souls and bodies, as a living sacrifice. Grant that we who partake of this Holy Communion may receive the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. At the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy and the fullness and the glory of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall, shall see our Lord face to face. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father. Now. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, and in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord who always delights in showing mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made. Beloved, behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb.
Blessed be your name, O Lord God, for it pleases you to have your habitation among your people and to dwell in the midst of the assembly of the saints upon earth. Bless the service of this day and grant that in this cathedral, now set apart for your glory, your holy name may be worshipped in truth and purity to all generations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O holy God, you breathe your life-giving spirit into the congregations, the church plants, and the emerging works of our diocese, calling us to join together in mission for the spreading of the gospel. Let us as we begin this new journey, go those who you have raised up for this work. Enable them to feed your people in Long Beach and throughout our four deaneries. We ask all this through the living presence of Now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen.